This time on Walleye 101, we're going to the great state of Michigan to the walleye capital of the world, the Detroit River. You know, the Detroit River has one of the biggest walleye spawns in all of the United States. Probably the mother load of 10 pound and up fish are taken each year during the early spring here in the Detroit River. So what a better place, what better time to meet up with Captain Aaron Black, who's got a technique that you probably never even heard about, hand lining. And while hand lining was originally developed here in, for the Detroit River, way back in the 40s, it's got a whole new modern spin here with Captain Aaron. So without further ado, let's introduce you to Captain Aaron. He'll tell you all about the techniques, the tactics, the gear and equipment, and even the lures, those top secret ones, that you're going to need to go out here and tackle this brand new technique to put more walleye in the boat for you. Well, just like I promised, here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Captain Aaron Black. Aaron, I definitely appreciate you taking us out here to teach us this awesome technique. I've, I've heard a lot of the pros are, are, are going to this technique until they make it illegal, of course. You know, every time something's too good, you know what happens. You know, they Absolutely. tend to take it away. But, but Aaron, I know that this technique has put a lot of big fish in the boat for you. Why don't you give me an idea how, how different this is from just conventional walleye fishing? Well, the difference to me is you're not using a rod and a reel. It's a more hands-on thing with the hands on the line. And to be quite honest with you, it's a lot more deadly in my opinion. It just puts fish in the boat. I've been hearing that you can get some really big fish this way because you're using, not, it's not just about the bigger baits, but you're right in their face with these lures. Absolutely. I mean, you're right down there on the bottom. You're fishing the baits right, right where they want to be. I mean, and it's, you know, it's, it's almost becoming a nuisance, these baits to them, and they're just hammer time. They're just coming right, jumping right in the boat. Aaron, no pressure, no pressure, but my big walleye this season, Three pounds, man. Three pounds, a big, uh, uh, what, 18, 19 incher, man. What do you think? Nope. Probably something like that in the future for me? We'll do our best. Uh, you the man, you the we'll man. Well, let's get out best. here. Why don't you teach us a little bit about the, the you know, I, I know you got that special rig on your boat. I know you got some specialized equipment. Why don't we get you over there and kind of explain to the audience what all this stuff's about? Let's do it. The first thing I'm going to tell you about hand lining is the boat and boat control. One of the most important tools in hand lining. The boat we're here in an 18 foot crest liner, aluminum boat with a tiller motor. And the reason I choose this boat is because when you're hand lining, your baits are to the rear of the boat always. And that allows me to make turns and maneuver without getting my baits and leaders caught into the engine. As opposed to a side council where you're up forward or a center council or other cabin style boats where the driver's up forward. Uh, the other reason is, is you're right here, boat control is a necessity in hand line and your speed, your direction, everything is just so critical in boat control. Battling the wind, the current, everything. I got my baits in one hand, the motor in the other, and I know exactly what both of them are doing. I'm right here and I can make quick, easy determinations on what I need to do to present the bait perfectly. Another reason is there's nothing in front of me. The best technique to land a fish hand lining is just to lift it and flop it in the boat. I'm all wide open in front of me. I'm still in control and I have nothing obstructing landing the fish. Whereas if you had a side council or a center council, you're obstructed with all that kind of stuff. Uh, having that being said, we'll go into the baits and techniques on how to hand line. You know, hand lining's been around here for a long time in Southeast Michigan and I can actually remember Back when I was about six years old, my grandfather took me for the first time and uh, he had this big box conglomeration with the wire, you know, the homemade jobs. But uh, as everything in evolution and fishing for so long, they really got it down to a science. Uh, today we're using these new A&S hand line reels made from a local guy here that uh, and all they are is it's a spring loaded reel. And you can pull and it's loaded up with about 300 yards of vinyl coated wire about a hundred pound test and they're spring loaded and you attach what they call a shank to that and that is also a wire with a similar amount of test and attached to that are clevises about every six inches or so and at the bottom of that use about a pound and a half two pound weight whichever you prefer I prefer about a pound and a half and you'd like the weights with the wire on the bottom for this particular area of fishing um, the area we're going to be fishing is a lot of structure, a lot of rocks, and the wire on the bottom of the weight is essential and helps bounce that, tap that right along the bottom. Um, they have other kind of weights that you would like to use. This is a homemade weight and you can make your own weights or buy them, but this is a homemade weight and you can see there's no wire on the bottom. Uh, this, this weight would not be good um, fishing a, a spot with structure. This weight would be ideal for a sandy, 
gravelly bottom, mucky bottom, something very smooth where you're not going to get a lot of snags. You'd want to definitely use this as opposed to this where the, the wire would just stick right into the ground instead of just kind of slide across the sand. So there's two different kind of weights, two different kind of scenarios to use. Attached to your uh, shank here, attached to your clevises, you'd have leaders. And I generally tend to use uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader material. And um, I like 10s and 20s, uh, 10 foot and 20 foot lengths, I find to be about the best. And you'd, you could um, strategically place these up these clevises. Depending on the baits you're using and how far they dive, how many feet back, all that stuff, you don't want your baits um, snagging the bottom, running along the bottom, but just above the bottom, it'd be perfect. So depending on the bait you're using, you would adjust the height of your leaders on your shank to suspend them up and down in the water table. Now in terms of actually using this, all you do is simply put this over the boat and the spring-loaded reel allows you to get your line out and you let your weight hit the bottom and just lift it up just a touch and you want that weight just tink, tink, tink it along the bottom. You don't want to be dragging it, yet you want to be able to feel the bottom. And what's happening is this is taking your leaders and your baits down to the bottom, right where the walleye like them, at your different leader lengths, depending on the baits you're using, you adjust your leader um, lengths back to, to get them right on the bottom. Now in terms of baits to use, we'll go over some baits to use. Now here's a few of the baits that we technically uh, use for hand lining. We have your pencil plugs, different size pencil plugs here. We have your Rapalas, different size, some jointed Rapalas, and we have some little spoons here. Now early off in the spring when the water's cold, um, typically the pencil plug would be the bait to use. The bait, um, it's kind of a slow moving bait. Um, you know, the fish are still kind of, you know, a little sluggish in the fall and as the water warms up and they're getting um, more and more ready to spawn, they're getting a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more feisty. You'd want to use, a, start out with the Rapalas, go to a Rapala. Um, you know, the jointed ones, uh, the bigger, the smaller. Uh, the, I, I usually like the, the original floating Rapalas myself, seem to work the best. Um, for this technique. Uh, the size um, has a little bit to do with it, um, but it's mainly the action that it produces. You know, the Rapala's action is, um, it's a faster action with the smaller baits. The bigger baits get a little bit slower action. So it's just kind of a trial and error as type of season is throw a couple out there, see what's working and go from there. But they're definitely a hot ticket. Different sizes, different colors. As we move into summer, in the late summer when the water gets warm and the fish are kind of just doing their thing, you go, um, finally you go to the spoons work the best for that time of year. Uh, spoons have a different action altogether. Um, you can fish these in the river, the lake, same technique, anywhere you want to go to fish the spoons, but this is a perfect summertime bait with the warm weather, warm water. Uh, back to the fall, you can go back to your, as the water temperature declines again, you know, it's the same as in the spring, only in reverse. You switch back to your Apollos again and work right into your pencil plugs you know, catch that temperature change and that water and how they're acting at the time of year and it just comes in full circle. And we're all back and uh, the baits work great. Catches walleye every time. What you want to do, keep all the line in first. Okay. Keep all the line in. So you don't get it tangled up. Okay. Ow. And you stick yourself in the finger. <laughs> All right, and then throw it out. Just kind of pitch it out a couple feet away and just feed the line out. Okay, and then just take it like this. And I always hold it with the opposite hand, let it drag for a minute and give a quick tug on your leaders and you'll be able to feel the action of the Rapala, you know, just so you know that they're running right real quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hold up like this and just grab it and give it a quick tug. Oh, okay. And you'll be able to feel the, can you feel the action? You know when you give it a quick tug? Yeah, they're running, they're yep. running good. Okay, now just gradually let it slide down with, with your hand. Let it line out until you hit the bottom. What kind of depth are we in? 12 foot. We are. Feel it? Yep. Okay, and just tap it. 
let it just tap. You know, adjust it in or out, however much line you need to let a little out, bring a little in, just so you're just ticking the bottom there. Then I just kind of bounce, I move my hand up and down maybe six inches and bounce it on the bottom is all. Boom, boom, kind of like jigging with a rod. And I like to bounce it up and down maybe about six inches is all, six, eight inches. That way if there's a log or something, you kind of bounce over it. Donnie says he, li he likes to drag it. I'm not a big fan of dragging. Seems like I get snagged up, but it's all personal preference. And when one does take a hold of it, it's obvious. It's obvious. Okay. okay. You'll hear, feel it. You know, it'll feel like a fish on a rod, but except it's, you're holding it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Plenty and of. And then at that time, you just two hands, nice and steady, like this. You know. Okay. Constant motion. Okay. And then if it's on, you could tell when you get to your shank, you'll be like this. You'll be able to tell which line. You get to your shank, and you'll feel which leader it's on. Right. Say it's on the bottom, Uh huh. you throw the top one over your shoulder. First thing, get the weight in the boat. Right. Okay. Throw the top one over your shoulder and forget about it. Okay. Then deal with the bottom one. Okay. And the top one being over your shoulder is out of the way. Don't right, get tangled okay. Up. Okay. If it's on the top one, then just get the weight in the boat, pull it in. Okay. Let the bottom one go. Okay. It was heavy. It got heavy for a minute, and I thought, oh boy. Okay. And sometimes that's how they feel, just some extra weight? Yeah, sometimes it's just extra weight. Okay. You know, they'd be swimming up with it, and then they, once they see the surface, they'll go nuts. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've always heard, times. right at dark, man. Yeah. That these walleye go crazy, so. Yep. Tick, tick, tick. All right. You know why else I don't like jiggers? But a guy that showed me one is first three. <laughs> now this is, a, I just switched up baits here and I got my top lead, the 20 foot lead. You just kind of throw that out and get that out in the water. And when you're doing your leaders and stuff, it's just as easy just to, I use the 20 pound test like I had mentioned. And that allows me to just throw it in the bottom of the boat. It's stiff enough where you're not gonna get it all knotted up and it's real easy to come undone. With the top one out and the bottom one out, you always want to throw the top one over your shoulder, and that lifts it up and keeps the line and everything out of the way of the bottom one. And I'm going to switch out the bottom one real quick and try and get a little different colors going and see if we can't uh, figure these dudes out here. That's kind of a cool color pencil plug there. Yeah, that's kind of a homemade job there. I've always really? had good luck with that. Blue, and then you get the reflective material and a little bit of red. A little bit of shine on there. Yeah, nice. That was my lucky duck in bright days. You get a lot of flash on it. Oh, yeah. It seems like, so I figure out the red sun head. was up. Then the bottom one, you just throw in, and you grab your shank and your weight, and I always, you know, take your top one over your shoulder again, and I always like to hold it up like this and make sure my leaders are all running true, which they are. Good to go, and down you go. Just lower it down a little bit, feel the bottom, and just tick, tick, tick the weight off the bottom. And then hopefully it'll feel like somebody's pulling like you owe them money or something. That's man. right. <laughs> we'll start yanking on that thing like no tomorrow. <laughs> then when it comes time to pull that fish in, just steady pressure, just keep pulling it, you know. Absolutely. You get a fish. There's no set in the hook, there's no nothing. You just, he's on there. Just nice and easy. Move steady. You always want to keep forward motion, you know. You don't start jerking and this and that because that's bad news. That's when you're going to lose them. That's when you're going to lose them. That's the one downfall about fishing this way. The benefit is it's a deadly technique of fishing. Sure. The downfall is you don't have that rod bending with all the slack. Yeah. You don't have 40 foot of eight pound mono that's got stretched to it. Sure. It, you know, you get a little give, you know. With this, it's, you got your hard wire, no stretch whatsoever, and then your leads are only 10 and 20 foot long. Right, So there's no stretch there. No stretch to that. Right. 
So it's just steady pressure. You know, you want to yank it right out. So when you get a, a fish on, when you feel that you've got a fish on, you'll lift that, that sinker up slowly first, but, you know, keep attention on everything. Absolutely. And then at that point, you can tell which one of those leaders the fish is on. Absolutely. If it's on the top leader, what do you do? On the top leader, the first and foremost thing you want to do is get the weight in the boat. Okay. You don't want the weight over the side. Get it in the boat because you have a tendency to grab your leader, let go of your wire, grab your leader to get the fish in the boat while your weight's over uh -huh. there. Now your weight's going down. Okay. Okay. So first and foremost, get the weight in the boat. Okay. You feel which leader it is. If it is on the top leader, you do nothing but simply bring it in the boat. Okay, just pull it right on in. If you find that the fish is on your bottom leader, as I just said when I was putting the baits out, you grab the top one, wrap it over your shoulder, that gets it up and out of the way. Okay. And then you could fight the fish in the, off the bottom leader. Okay, and then just lift it right up into the boat. Just flop it right into the boat. There we go, there flop we go. Flop it right in. And you want it, you know, silly as it sounds, but you want to control that fish. Sure. You know, that fish is coming, and you want to be sure, you know, you see what he's doing. You, you know, you, there's a little bit of technique to fighting it. Sure. It's just not grab it and throw it in the boat. Right. You know, kind of want to read what he's doing and kind of go with him. Sure. Control that fish and with no slack, no jerk, just nice, easy, flop. Right. Right. And you're in. Right. I'll show you that I've mastered that concept here any second now. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it too. <laughs> now, Skipper, I noticed that, man, I'm having to pull this thing up. I feel on the bottom and then right back down, up and down. It's got to be a definitely an irregular bottom here in the Detroit River. This is a real, real irregular bottom. Um, you know, there's it's a lot of limestone. There's a lot of big rocks, a lot of small rocks. It's um, pretty well solid rock all the way for as far as you can see in through here. And uh, this particular stretch, because of the power plant, when they dredged out years ago to get the freighters up here to offload coal, they just put all the spoils and dredgings and just let them go down here. Oh, wow. So there's just tremendous amount of structure in through here, big rocks, boulders, and there was no rhyme or reason to their placement. They just kind of loaded them up on a barge, went out here and dumped them. I know that uh, regardless of the technique, this is a famous stretch of the river for you know, whether you're jigging or hand lining, et cetera. Uh, you always hear people talking about go up to the candy stripes. And I guess that's the power plant because it's got the red and white stripes, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, and it is, a, it, it's, it's a unique part in the fact that um, for the spring walleye spawn and the walleye run, um, there's the, the huge warm water discharge. You know, they suck the water in from the river to cool down the um, plant and then discharge it back in the river. So typically there's a higher, the, the water temperature is warmer in this area of the river than it is out in the lake or other spots. Right. So in the springtime, they'll tend to come up here and it's just ideal for the walleye spawn all across the board. You know, they get the warmer water, there's a current, which they love the current to keep the silt and everything, you know, from burying the eggs up. They got structure from what they, they love the structure. And it's just, uh, just a fabulous place to fish. And then I think they spawn when the temperature's either in the low 40s or, I mean, the high 40s or low 50s, don't they? Yeah, typically, um, from my understanding and experience being out here, it's it's right around fit between 52, 52, 54 degrees. You know, some years it might be 48, 49, but exactly right in that range from about 48 to 54. And I think that time of year, this river, as you can tell now, I mean, it, it, it's stained, but I mean, this is a beautiful river now. I mean, in, in terms of clarity, yes. it's, it's not crystal clear yet. But I think that the earlier in the spring, the clearer it is, isn't it? From yeah. all that cold water, you know, everything's nice and clear. It's, Absolutely. It's not until we start getting those heavy spring rains when you get a lot of runoff in here when it really gets cloudy. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Now the proper boat technique and boat control when you're hand lining in a river, especially this river with current, is you don't want the boat to flow down current to the south. The current is what's actually working your baits. Because you got your baits and leaders getting pulled behind you with the current, working your baits. So if you're moving with the current, your baits are not working. Right. Working properly. So the optimum forward progress is okay, but that's where your boat speed comes into play. You don't want to go too fast. Because then that, you know, it's not I, an effective presentation. And I noticed that what we're basically doing is working our way in these in this zigzag pattern, but you know, back and forth across the river. Is that is that the preferred way? That's the preferred way, exactly. 
definitely not moving south, gradually working your way upriver in a back and forth pattern. And you're just dangling those baits right in front of them as you go back and forth. And that would even slow down the, the speed of the lure more, you know, you know, by not really making much forward progress. What you really got is just that speed of the current that's giving it that action, and then we're just barely crawling along the bottom, right? That's absolutely correct. Okay. That's absolutely correct. Because these fish are staged up on the bottom, ready to spawn, and they're obviously, you know, facing up river. Right. So you're just working these baits back and forth right in front of them. And they're all staged behind these rocks, using them as current breaks. So all of a sudden, here comes one of these stick baits just right in front of them. Too much to resist. You absolutely. Know? <laughs> Absolutely, fish in the boat. Yeah, that's got to be a walleye. Yeah, I think we got us a walleye, buddy. All righty, that's what we're looking for. And again, it's on that top line, man. And that is a hot bait tonight. That top line, it just, uh, you know, nonstop. Nonstop. <sighs> Something about that color, I guess. Now I'm just spooling all this line right here in my lap. Now here, here comes is. that walleye. That is a nice walleye there. Nice and easy, just flop her in. Hurry up. There we go. There he is. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. All right, sports fan. That's what I'm talking about. Now this particular lure, what do you refer to this as? That would just be, uh, I would just call that a chartreuse and silver. Chartreuse and silver. And that is a number nine Rapala. And and they've he, been liking that chartreuse color, that clown color. And well, when you picked this color, I, I knew that was going to be a good color. Look at that guy. I fell for that color. Did you hear that? Yeah. Man, nice guy, man. Nice, nice guy. Nice male there. And and he's letting, and he's verifying that he is a male. Yes, and he he's is. He's definitely verifying, verifying that. that. But, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna put this guy, you know where he's going. He's going into Lake Crisco. We're gonna do catch and release, Lake Crisco with this guy. Perfect eating size fish. Now this is some big egg laden female. I'd be definitely putting her back. But this guy right here, destined for greatness. Hey, Protein, baby. I couldn't agree with you better. <laughs> All that right, man. That is a nice fish. I'll that tell is you a what, perfect, I'm... nice 17, 18 inch eater. Those are the perfect eaters. I would have said this is probably at least 15 pounds, but you know, I. I, you know, I haven't weighed a lot of these fish, obviously, but, you know, nice link to them. Yes. Look at that link, nice fish. Well, I'm gonna get this, all this, all this stuff right back in the water, because I got that good feeling that something good's going. Now, now take a look at this. See a little dent in the back? Yeah, you I'm, know what? I'm thinking that's giving us that little bit of action, you know? It could be. Been catching fish on it, so hey, right back. Hang in there, buddy. There you go, all right. Mr. There Walleye, we once again. Look at that. <laughs> Got off. <laughs> Got off in the right spot, Another though, right? Detroit River male, obviously. <laughs> Perfect eater. Got Lake off in Crisco. the right spot. Right spot. <laughs> Lake Crisco. Oh, heck Lake yeah. Crisco. Catch and release. We're going to enjoy this. <laughs> the perfect eater right there. That's what we're here for. You got it, man. You got it. Good job. What lure was that? That was it. Pencil. Um, that pencil plug I told you I was catching them the other night, but kept losing them. Yeah, and he came off in the, but yeah, but at least he was in the boat when he yeah. came off this time. Man. And now it hooked you. Yep, <laughs> it got me. I'm in the zone, man, any minute. Any minute. That was a good color for you. Orange head with a, was that a chartreuse? Shiny body? Yeah, a little chartreuse kind of chromey mix type of thing. They call that a Ralphie, I guess. How'd he hit it? Real soft. Real soft. I had to. What we got going on here? Well, when mine hit it, you know, he about jerked the line out of my hand, you know? Yeah, this one, I couldn't tell if he was on, off again, on again, off again. I. Well, it's a good thing you slung him up when you did. Yeah. You got me nervous going heading for that motor like you did right in the back of the boat. I thought, oh boy. Is that on the top one? Top one. Top one again.
You're not going to believe this. You got a double? A double. Yes. Great job, man. Look at that. A double. Two fish on one bait. On one bait? On one bait. Wow. Oh, have you ever done that before? I have never done that before. Wow. And we did it on camera. What do you think? <laughs> something else, huh? Two on the same bait. That's a nice fish there. No kidding. Wow. That is a nice fish. On the same you know, I bait. I felt that. And I said, you know what? This is a big fish. No but kidding? I decided, I said, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Let's get him in the boat first. Man. And I saw them. I saw four eyes in the light, and I'm thinking, <laughs> You have got to be kidding me. Wow, man, that's a stocky fish there. That's a nice fish. Wow. Both on the same bait. Nice fish. Never done that before, huh? Never done that before. Not on the same bait. I've had doubles, one on each sure, bait, but sure. not two on one. Man, what are the odds, you know? Boy, a first. A first. A first. Two fish on, on the same day. lure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, on camera, man, you gotta love that, you know? Oh, I man. mean, what are the odds, you know? What are the odds? Holy cow. That is something cool. Nice fish too, huh? Yeah, sure was, man. I mean you I mean you were thinking it was one giant fish, it ended oh, up being man, two I, on the same plug, man. I thought I had a hog and I was all getting ready to get all giddy and I says, you know what, I should keep my mouth shut. Let's get this in the boat first. And and but both of them are nice. Both nice, of them are nice. Nice fish. Yeah. And and both on the top. It was a top one, wasn't it? Both on the top. Absolutely. Gee, man, they, great job, man. Unbelievable. Boy, that's a man, that's a tough act to follow, man. <laughs> that's a tough it act to follow. Be done. <laughs> it can be done. It's like somebody hit a switch out here. You just had the two on the one bait. I'm not even in the water yet, and you got one. Yeah. And 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 guess, is it top or bottom? I would have to say top again. And of course, you're psychically right. Unbelievable. So I'm just going to take this and sink her, put it right in. Forget about that, and keep right on pulling. And he feels good. He feels good. Of course, they all feel I'm good. I'm going to turn towards you and open you up a little bit. Yeah, because so he's. So you're not fighting the motor. Yep. Keep that one out of the way. Don't worry about that. You just get that bad boy in the boat. We'll untangle. It's a good one. Ding! Yeah! All right. Yeah! Dun 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 dun. <laughs> you betcha. Boy, that top lure, buddy. That thing is hot to my I would not take this lure off for nothing. Well, would I not hate to take break it the on. news to you, but I think we're going to have to because that fish just busted that lip right oh. off that thing. Did he? It's been working, man. I feel it. You bet. I hey, feel it. You're the man. Lip or not, something about this thing, he has been working. Now, if that don't get a bite in the next 15 minutes, you know I'm going to bring it back in. You know <laughs> that, right. right? You know. But I mean, we have just popped. I mean, it's a deadly technique, man. I mean, I mean, when they go, there's, there's, you know, when the fish want to eat and they turn on, I don't think there's any other productive way to do it. I mean, this is putting it right in their face. And obviously it's working. I mean, to get two on the same lure and within minutes, I just pop one. I mean, you know. You gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I just landed that double, and I'm pretty tangled up here. Not a big deal. That's why I use the 20 pound. It's a little bit more stiff. But just a little tip and trick I've used when you're trying to untangle your lines to get fishing, it's a heck of a lot easier just to take the bait right off. And then deal with your line, and then put the bait back on. You don't oh. have the hooks yeah. to deal with to hook up your other lines again. Good idea. You know, so I just take that off, and I figure out what I got to do here. And you know, before you know it, you're back fishing. But if you sometimes it seems you're flipping the bait up and in and around, yeah, you're right. hooked up on the hooks. Keep getting snagged up, tying the knot. It just uh, just a little trick you learn after being snagged. Yeah. <laughs> for so many. Staying deep. That's a good sign. He feels heavy compared to the other ones. Heavy.
That's a monster. It's a monster. That's it's a, a monster. monster. Hey, ho. Ho, there we go. Look at that big boy. Look at that big boy. He, you know, we just put this down there, and he just could not that resist color tonight for you. I like that color, and I like him. Good quality fish. Look at this guy. This thing had no sooner hit the bottom than bada boom, bada bing. It's a wonderful thing, you know? What do you think? 10, 15 pounds? Lie to me. Oh, Come on. Least. Come on. At least. I'd say nice length to that one, isn't it? I'd say 20. 20 good girth. Yeah, good girth on them. Nice fish. All right, buddy. Never, you know, having never hand line before, you know, Aaron was saying, hey, about 930, you know, the switch has been turning on. And guess what time it was when we got that first fish? 9.30. Right on time, and he said, and usually about 10.45, and what time we get the last fish? So within that hour and 15 minutes, we get all seven fish, just bam, bam, bam. He even got the two at, 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 on one lure at one time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sold on this hand line. I had a great time, Aaron. What would you say if you had to leave everybody with a couple of key things to keep in mind if they wanted to go out and, and try some of this hand line? Well, I think there's a couple real important things, but I think the first and foremost important thing is boat control. I mean, you really got to, you know, tweak your boat down to that optimum speed and take in consideration your wind, your currents on whatever river you're fishing. You know, just get out there, play around with it a little bit, but you, the, the speed and boat control is absolute key. And the other thing is you want to keep those baits as close to the bottom as at all possible, right in that strike zone. You know? That's exactly what I did. I, I was listening to every little word he was saying. He said, Don, you got to keep right down. And that's, that's where I got all my fish. Every time I'd, I'd suddenly just figure out that, that that sinker was up off the bottom, nothing was happening. So exactly what you said, man. Yeah, man. And we, we, had, we had a good time tonight. <laughs> well, you know, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. You know, this is a, a totally new technique that a lot of places haven't even heard about yet. So maybe you're in on something special. So for Walleye 101, I'm Don Sweet. We'll see you next time out on the water chasing them hogs.